we're going to move on to chapter five and chapter five is, a, is about uh, analytic trigonometry so we're going to dig deeper into the trigonometry so section 5.1 we're going to learn how to use a fundamental and identities from trigonometry so um, learn the objective recognize and write the fundamental trigonometric identities and we're going to use fundamental trigonometric identities to evaluate trigonometric functions simplify trigonometric expression rewrite trigonometric expression so um we're gonna learn how to use the fundamental identities to do the following evaluate trigonometric functions simplify trigonometric expressions develop additional trigonometric identities from the current identities and also solve trigonometric equation Now, um, this is very important identities we learned so far. First one is the reciprocal identities. So sine and cosecant are reciprocal. So sine u equal to one over cosecant u. And then cosine and secant are reciprocals. So cosine u equal to one over secant u. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So tangent u equal to one over cotangent u. And you can reverse order to get the, the other three set. So basically, if you want to put in really simple way to sine u times cosecant u must be equal to one, and from here cosine u times secant u must be equal to one, and here tangent u times cotangent u that's equal to one. Now that's best way to categorize those um, inverse. I mean reciprocal identities. <clears throat> now we also have a quotient identity. So tangent u could be written as sine u over cosine u. Cotangent u could be written as cosine u over sine u. And we also have a Pythagorean identities. Sine u squared plus cosine u squared equal to one. And one plus tangent u squared equal to secant u squared. One plus cotangent u squared equal to cosecant u squared. And later on, I'm going to show you how to utilize some of these properties to solve the actual problems. And next identity is cofunction. So um, sine pi over 2 minus u equal to cosine u. So when these two angles are complementary angles, so pi over 2 minus u plus u becomes pi over 2. And that's pi over 2, that's complementary angles. And sine of one of the angles is equal to cosine of the complementary angle. Same thing, cosine of the complement of the angle equal to sine of the complementary angle. So uh, in this case, you can switch from sine to cosine, cosine to sine, tangent to cotangent, cotangent to tangent, secant to cosecant, and cosecant to secant by utilizing the complementary angles. Also, even our identities. So a um, couple of them are even, right? Cosine, secant are even functions. Cosine is even, then secant is even because they are reciprocal. And the rest of them, they are odd. This is odd. So two of them are even, the other four will be odd. Just keep that in mind. So even function, cosine negative u equal to cosine u. Secant negative u equal to secant u. And for the R function, sine negative u becomes negative sine u, cosecant negative u becomes negative cosecant u, tangent negative u becomes negative tangent u, and cotangent negative u becomes negative cotangent u. Also, Pythagorean identities sometimes could be written as this. Let me show you how they get this. Sine u squared plus cosine u squared equal to 1. So if you want to get sine u by itself, you subtract cosine u square. And you get sine u square equals one minus cosine u square. Now taking the square root from both sides of the equation, so sine u square becomes sine u, and on the right hand side put plus minus one minus cosine u square. That's that's how we get this. So tangent u square similarly, right? You follow the same logic because tangent u square 
plus 1 equal to secant u square. We have to solve for tangent u, subtract 1 first. So we get tangent u square equal to secant u square minus 1. Now taking the square root on both sides of the equation, since it's even root of plus minus secant u square minus 1. That's how they get this. Okay. Now let's start using the fundamental identities to determine the following. So one common application is to give to use any given value of the trigonometry function to evaluate the other trigonometry functions. So now let's look at this. I use the value secant u equal to negative three over two and tangent u greater than zero. So remember when tangent u greater than zero, that means angle u is located either in the first quadrant or tangent u is also uh, greater than zero in the third quadrant. Okay. If secant u is negative, that tells us that cosine u is also negative, right? So cosine u is reciprocal, so it's going to be negative 2 over 3, which is less than 0. And we know that cosine u is negative in the second quadrant and a third quadrant. So now you see that they both have third quadrants. So from here, we know that angle u must be located in the third quadrant. Here, this is very important because in the third quadrant, we know that um, only tangent and cotangent are positive. And everything else will be negative. So that basically provides the guidance when we try to find out the rest of the identities. So as I mentioned, cosine u is reciprocal of uh, the secant u. So you flip top and bottom, so it becomes negative two-thirds. Now we can use uh, cosine u to find the sine u by using the Pythagorean identities. Pythagorean. Because sine u square plus cosine u square equal to one. So here sine u square we try to solve for that. Cosine u is negative two third square that, and that's equal to one. So sine u square plus four ninth and that's equal to one. So from here we know that sine u square equal to 1 minus 4 ninth, which is 5 ninth. So sine u square equal 5 ninth. We know that in the third quadrant, so sine is negative. So when you take in the radical, you only keep the negative answer. So negative radical 5, five ninth. So it becomes negative radical 5 over 3. Okay, and that's how we find the sine u. And once you find the sine u, sine u is negative radical 5, then we know the we could find a cosecant u. Cosecant u is a reciprocal of this, so it's negative 3 over radical 5. And after that, we get to rationalize the denominator, then multiply by radical 5 on top of the bottom, so it becomes negative 3 radical 5 over 5. So we find a cosecant u, and since we know the cosine u, and we know secant u, right? That's given. Secant u is reciprocal, negative 3 over 2. And uh, we know the ten since we know sine cosine, then we know tangent because tangent u equal to sine u or cosine u. Now I just put in the both values and then simplify. Get a result of uh, of the tangent u. Sine u is negative radical 5 over 3 over negative 2 third. 2 negative to cancel each other and then radical 5 over 3. Final reciprocal of 2 third is 3 over 2. Now we cancel 3. So the tangent u equal radical 5 over 2. Now if you know tangent u, you know cotangent u. 
because cotangent u is reciprocal of the tangent u, so it times 2 over radical 5. Now we need to rationalize this one more time. So multiply both top and bottom by radical 5. And of 2 radical 5 over 5 for cotangent u. So in that case, we find all 6 trig identities here using the trigonometric um, identities. Now, let's learn how to simplify our trigonometric expression. For example, like what we have here. And in order to simplify this, first of all, factor by GCF, because GCF here is um, sine x. So if you factor out uh, sine x, now you get a cosine x squared minus 1. And also, we know that um, one of the trigonometric identities sine x squared plus cosine x squared equal to 1. Um, so here we know that cosine x squared is equal to 1 minus sine x squared. Right? So cancel that cosine x squared equal to 1 minus sine x squared. So now pack this plug into the original expression. So we get sine x cosine x squared is 1 minus sine x squared minus 1. Now cancel the 1, so we end up with sine x squared times negative sine x, no, sine x times negative sine x squared. We turn out to be um, ne sine x to the cube. sine x, and then uh, negative sine remains sine x to the first power times sine x to the second power using the exponential property should be negative sine x to the third power. Okay. So that should be the simplified form. <coughs> and example 7, we write the, the trigonometric expression uh, given this 1 over 1 plus sine x so that it's not in the in a fractional form, meaning we need to get rid of fraction. All right. So you rewrite this. So basically, we're going to use uh, Pythagorean identities. So you're going to multiply by one minus sine x of both, on both top and bottom. Okay. So now, once you have that. The denominator is a difference of two squares, like a plus b times a minus b. It becomes a squared minus b squared. So it's 1 squared minus sine x squared okay, on, on the bottom. On top, it's 1 minus sine x, because 1 minus sine x times 1 is, one, is the same, stays the same. And similarly, for an earlier step, we know that sine x squared plus cosine x squared, that's equal to 1. So you're going to directly input this into the denominator. You can do that. So now we end up with um, 1 minus sine x over sine x squared plus cosine x squared minus sine x squared. So now once you cancel the sine x squared, Now we can carry on from there. So this one get cancelled. Right. Well, we end up with a 1 minus sine x squared over cosine x squared. Okay. So now we can divide into that. Now it's um, it will become 1 over cosine x squared minus sine x over cosine x squared. Now we're going to split it, right? And it's going to be 1 over cosine x times 1 over cosine x for the first one. Second one, we're going to do 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. If you use a quotient identity, 1 over, 1 over cosine x becomes secant x times secant x minus 1 over cosine x, that's secant x 
times sine x over cosine x that's tan x. Then eventually it becomes uh, the result becomes secant x square minus secant x times tangent x. Right, so we get rid of the fraction at the end. Okay, so that's all for this section.